Good evening. Well, about four minutes ago, I called up my wife, Carol, who's at home, and said, Carol, this is really cool. They've filled up the room. <laughs> and half of you I don't recognize, and that's even more fun. So thank you for coming out this evening. And we'll be sharing two different things. One is what your purpose is. And then the other is about what we do in China. And so good to have you. I thank Christian for and his team for their good efforts in putting this together. And I hope the talk of the evening will be meaningful for you. Let's pray together again. Father, we thank you that you have placed your love upon us. You have, through your Son, absorbed the gift, the, the guilt of humanity and granted the gift of righteousness before you. It is astonishing that all of this ability that could create universes is controlled by your love. We praise you for it. And as we meditate together and think together and reflect together, we would ask that the Spirit of God would open our hearts to a clear picture of you and of your Son and the work of the Spirit of God. Thank you for each person in this room. All of us represent various needs, and we would ask that in a special way, your spirit would minister to every heart here at the place where we need your healing. For we ask this in Jesus' name. <coughs> Amen. Uh -huh. Let's see. Placement is everything. Good. So, the talk this evening is what it says up there. What is the purpose of your existence and why the Trinity needs you? What is the purpose of your existence and why the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit needs and wants you? As we step into this, we're going to step into it in a odd way, but I think it's a way that illustrates the significance of humanity and the significance of your person in the purposes of God. Paul the Apostle in the book of Romans gave the longest extended description of Christian thought in the Bible. And in Romans chapter 8, he not only talked about the Christian life, he oriented the body of Christ and humanity to the entire universe. And in this portion of scripture, he talks about the reversal of a universal futility, a universal purposelessness, a universal emptiness, that is going to be reversed by you. Let's see what he says. Paul is writing about sufferings, and he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. When he talks about sufferings in the context of Romans 8, he is not necessarily talking about persecution, persecution of the church, persecution of the individual believer. In the context, he is talking about the deterioration, the heartbreak, and the sadness of the human condition. And as he describes that, he makes this statement that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. They're not sufficient to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
as he speaks of that glory that is to be revealed to us, he takes the dimensions of our humanity and he expands them to the entire universe. And he says, in effect, that the fate of the universe revolves around you. And I suspect some of you are thinking, hey, I have a pet dog and he doesn't take me seriously. <laughs> I have a boss that considers me an idiot. Or I am the boss and I may be the idiot. <laughs> There's an endless number of ways that you could feel wretched about yourself. What life has given you, what parents may have done, what broken relationships have hurt, and deep within your soul, I suspect the question of what is your worth, what is your value as a person, tugs at you and tugs at you. Yesterday afternoon, I was at River of Life Church, and we were videotaping coursework for China. And I have this Chinese translator, Mandarin translator, who went to Harvard, got a PhD, brilliant guy, and Chinese are stoic people. They have trained themselves to be, especially in public, emotionally neutral. And in the, that part of the course, we were talking about family background. And I asked the question of someone in the group, in the class, what do you think of the fact that people who come from an unhealthy family background walk into adult life with 200 pounds of stones in a knapsack on their back, and even the person from a healthy family background walks into life with 20 pounds of stones. And so he translated that, and of all things, his wife started answering the question, and then he broke down sobbing. He was being videotaped. He broke down sobbing. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me. And then his wife said, he and I will go out and talk in the hallway. And he came back and he said, I was always the first in my class in China. I was the first in my province in China educationally in getting awards. I was automatically accepted by Harvard. I had a Nobel laureate as my supervisor, and he said, I felt absolutely empty and worthless because all that I was doing, I was doing for everybody else and I had no value because all I was was what I did. A man with immense achievements. But at the core often of many of us, there is this question of worth, value. And Paul is going to address that. But he addresses it and talks about it here in a way that may almost seem strange in the way I apply it. But he writes, for the anxious longing of the creation, he suddenly takes us, those who belong to Christ, the members of the body of Christ, redeemed humanity, and he extends the dimensions to the whole universe. Because the term that he uses for creation is the term that Paul uses for the entirety of the physical universe. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. It's always interesting 
when you have a fair number of Caucasian women in the room who are products of the modern world, and you read where Paul uses the phrase sons of God, because I'm never quite sure what a Caucasian woman thinks when she reads what Paul writes, and he uses language that talks about sons of God. But in Asia, it's fun. Because in Asia, especially in the traditional cultures like Taiwan, the firstborn son is super special. And if you're a male, you're more special than a woman. And what Paul is describing here, the revealing of the sons of God, he is talking about the status of both women and men before God. They have the status of a mature, fully blessed, fully accepted, fully endowed child of God, a son of God. Then he continues, the creation, all of the creation is waiting eagerly for the creation was subjected to futility, emptiness. The creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but because of him who subjected it in hope. There is an assumption that Paul has, which is the physical universe as we know it was created for the purpose of human habitation. That the small earth, small in size, and the extended universe around it was made for the purpose of sustaining human life. Very odd little things. I'm, I'm not a Bible science guy. My knowledge of science is limited. But I like reading books about science. And one of the things I read, which I thought was very cool, do you know that the gravity on Earth depends upon the dimensions of the universe? The gravity that we use on Earth to walk around is not only the gravity of the Earth, but the rest of the universe counterbalances the gravity of the Earth. Because if we just had the gravity of the Earth, we would be the size of pancakes. But with the counterbalance of the pull of the universe, those two forces working against themselves allow us to function with two arms, two legs, and a head, and a movable body. Now you may say, boy, that is excessive. That God would actually create an anthropocentric universe so that human beings could inhabit this planet and everything about the universe is designed to sustain this one little planet with a few billion people on it. But he takes the step, he takes a further step. He says, because of the fall of the original couple, because of the fall of Adam, humanity was rendered futile and purposeless. And therefore, God rendered the universe purposeless, empty of meaning. But when the sons of God are revealed, the daughters and sons of God are revealed, the universe will regain its purpose. So it's not the size of space you inhabit. It's the significance of your person in the plans of God that matter. And he continues on and he says that the creation itself, verse 21, will be set free from its slavery to corruption. For the entire universe was placed into corruption along with the corruption of Adam. From the slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory, the majesty, the beauty of the children of God. 
For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. What is the picture? It is saying that there is something so...